Guys, on this channel, we mostly go over tool-related products. So like the Ryobi inverter, the Ego inverter, something that we're using outdoor power equipment with. And I'm gonna be honest with you, those inverters from the companies I just mentioned are absolute crap. And I say that with the utmost respect to you guys who have purchased them. I liked them, but they all had some sort of issue from either over voltage, blowing up circuitry in our RV, or to not living up to the marketing standards that are out there. I finally spent some of my hard-earned money on something that's real. This is the Bluedy AC200P. This is a lithium iron phosphate unit. It's gonna take 3,000 charges before you lose that top 20% of the battery, meaning even after 3,000 charges, you are still gonna be able to charge this up to 80%. This thing lives up to what it is as far as marketing, and it's something that will last me a decade plus. So this is well worth looking into. I'm gonna bring you in, walk you around most of it. There is a ton in here, but I'm gonna give you the overview of it. Stick with us. So I wanna just hit this quickly again because it's hard for me in the tool world to wrap my head around this. This AC200P is lithium iron phosphate. So it's a very safe battery that takes a ton of charges, can be stored and is recommended to be stored at full charge. So yes, 3000 charges before you lose that top 20% of the battery. That's amazing, right? So you could use this just day in, day out as a solar charged generator, which it works great. You can have up to 700 watts of solar coming into this. That is amazing too, considering you can push out almost 2000 watts with it. So you can dang near run a lot of things, including a small air conditioner with this. It's set up as 2000 watt hours. Now you're always gonna have some efficiency. So it runs at an 88% efficiency and it keeps that bottom 10% of the battery for safety. So technically here you have 1600 watt hours of use. I know I'm getting into this crazy thing, but everybody will ask me, how long will it run this appliance? So if you take that 1600 watt hours, divide that by the amount of watts that you're using for your appliance, that'll equal the amount of hours that this will run it. So if you have a 400 watt appliance that's running on this, it'll run it for four hours straight. Now the big thing about this is that this will actually charge via solar or via a battery plugged into the wall and output. Also, this will also charge via solar and wall charging at the same time. So if you plug this into the wall, it'll take about five hours for this unit to charge. If you plug it into solar, you have 700 watts, it'll take uh, about four hours for it to charge. If you plug them in together and you have your solar and your corded charging, you can get it in about three hours. You can also plug this into a car, it, while you're driving down the road, it'll take 12 to 14 hours. There's a million ways of charging this. There's a million things that it does. Let's come in and take a look at it. Most of the outlets for this AC200P are located on the front side of this unit. There are two wireless charging ports that are 15 watts on the top of it. You can use that to charge your watch, your phone, anything that's wireless. You have your six 20 amp outlets that are on the front. Now this is labeled as 2000 watts and it's 2000 watts consistent output here. It is capable of 4,800 watt surge and 2,500 watts for two minutes. Now you will get a fault when you go over and it'll give you a warning that, hey, you know, you need to watch what's happening here, but you can get about two minutes out of 2,500 watts. And in fact, uh, you can get upwards of 2,700 watts for a short period of time. It's pretty cool how it all works, but you also have a USB-C output here if you're running a small computer. If you have anything that's going to plug in with a USB-A, you can plug them in there. There's four outputs. You have a cigarette lighter adapter here, which is gonna be 10 amp, and then you have two small three amp 12 volt plugs. But if you're gonna use this in a van or an RV that's set up for 12 volt, you can get a plug from Bluedy that'll plug in here. It'll actually clip in and stay clipped in. And you can run 25 amps to another 
uh, type of relay system or you can plug it into just about anything here. You can run a lot of things off of 12 volt, 25 amp. So if you want to use this in your van or however it was for a solar charging unit, you could do so without issue. Now the big thing that I find with a lot of these different units that we've used is that they'll turn off after a short period of time to save battery if there is a low draw situation. So for this unit, you can cruise over here and it has what's called an eco mode. Currently I have it off. So if you want to hook this up to a sump pump, something that turns on and then turns off, and it might, there's no real set time, turn your eco mode to no, and this unit will stay running at all times, never turn itself off. So for using it in a home, like, you know, backup power sense, that is going to be amazing. If you want it to turn itself off to save battery, you can just click this over to yes. This touch screen is amazing. You can adjust your voltages in your DC inputs here. You can also see a lot of data as to what's going on as far as the battery voltage, its state of charge, what it's doing. There's a lot to go through if you just like to see different things that are happening as far as the inputs, the outputs, there's a lot of information if you want to go through it, but basically on the home screen, you'll see that we have the DC off. We'll turn that on. We have the AC currently on at this point in time. We're at 61% charged. This little solar panel guy up here is telling us we have zero watts in. This is our plug-in side. It's saying we have zero watts coming in. On the DC side, we have zero watts going out. My phone is fully charged from sitting up there. On the AC load, we have zero watts going out. So I have a hot plate sitting here just to basically demonstrate. I can turn this guy on. The fan for the unit comes on. This comes up to about 1500 watts to run that guy. So if we used our math and said, hey, this is a 1600 watt hour unit divided by 1500 watts, we would get just over one hour's use of that hot plate on this unit while it's running. Now you've all seen this as far as uh, other testing that we've done. On low, this is about 700 watts. On high, it's uh, about 1200 watts. So if we kick this on low, we'll go up to 2200. We get our fault, but we can still run this at this point for a short period of time. Kick it off, we'll hit our fault. It'll tell us what's going on, no issue. It doesn't kick itself off. And in fact, some of the other units we've seen wouldn't be able to take that kind of a load for any amount of time. Now we can kick this guy on high, watch what happens with our wattage. 2,800, 28, 27 as right now. If we turn that off fairly quickly, we can easily go right back, not trip the unit. Now, if we kept it on long periods of time, let's say 30 seconds or so, this unit would trip. But again, we have a surge of 4,800, which that surge is gonna be real quick there, but it will handle a sustained load of 3,000 watts for a very short period of time. And again, 2,500 for about two minutes. So with this running, works great. The big thing to me with these units is that they don't normally allow you to have an electric input while you're using any of the outputs here, especially the AC outputs. So what I just did was plug in right here, our AC adapter. You can see we're running 430 watts in and about 1500 watts out. So we're able to plug this into the wall, charge this unit and use its output at the same time which is something, again, we do not find in the tool-related types of battery inverters. On the side of the unit, we have the two inputs. Basically, we have an adapter here that we can plug in. This is a 58.8 volt adapter. It is eight amps. It's about 461 watts that we can input. You can hear the fan running on it at this point in time as we are charging. It's just a simple plug that's here. That will take your input basically from this charger. Now, if you want to solar charge or charge from your car or anything like that, you have this plug that will plug in here. 
and then you have just a normal adapter that you can find in multiple different places but you can plug this in to your cigarette adapter if we just connect these two up no issue if you'd like to have a solar charger or solar panel attached to it you can plug in here and this can be split obviously I do not have any good solar panels that have this type of connection all the ones I have are cheaper units that won't connect to this but you can get 700 watts of input through this and again you can charge with both the AC adapter and solar or AC and a car if you wanted to charge faster to try to get this up than the normal just simple charging block there's a lot of options here and it's amazing as to how they allowed you to push power into this and still use power at the same time. Here we have the AC on and the DC on, although it really doesn't matter. We're not pulling much DC voltage. We have our circular saw attached. Let's just make a couple cuts. So if we watch our watt output here, we can see that when we start the saw, we start to get a draw of about 2,500 watts. And as we go through the wood and if we get into some tougher points, uh, while that wattage drops, it'll also come back up and come down, all depending on the load we put on the saw. So that is why a lot of the other battery operated solar generators aren't working for us because as soon as we get to that 2000 watt, even if they tell us they're a 3000 watt peak, they don't allow us to get much over that 2500 or even 2200 watts, in some cases with the Ryobi 1600 watts, before it cuts us off. So we need something significant to run power tools while we're away from power, and this guy definitely has the power to do so. So all in all, we really showed you the top end of what this is going to do. And we're doing that by using larger tools and something that heats up. Obviously things that heat up are going to take a lot of watts, but this is capable of running a small air conditioner. It's also capable of running a microwave. It can do laundry machine. It cannot do an electric dryer, but it could run a gas dryer. So in a lot of different situations at home, including freezers and refrigerators, it will run that. Now for me, what I purchased this for is long trips that we're going out in our RV boondocking. Now we're going places like out west and we have to stop in between. And if we happen to stop to sleep overnight, I have a residential refrigerator inside our RV that needs to be powered. And I can do so via an outlet on the outside, which will power the internal inverter, charge the batteries up for the next day's trip and run the refrigerator without issue. I'm trusting this guy to do so, and I've done a lot of testing on it to make sure that I'm comfortable with that. And this is one of the first ones that I've run through here without just plugging it in and blowing things up like I did on the first round, um, really is going to make sense. So with that residential refrigerator inside our new RV, I can't just say I'm gonna stop overnight and let it rip because it'll drain the three batteries that are in the unit. I need to charge those batteries back up and run the AC or the refrigerator at the same time. I can't run the AC in the RV, simply too many watts with everything else running. That's why I invested. Now for you, if you're running tools or you're running a job site or you're running something else, this is a better option than what is out there in the tool world with either Ryobi or Ego. And I'm putting those two out there because we've tested those in flat out the Ryobi just simply didn't cut it when it came to actual specs and their marketing specs are way out there. So that one just simply is not an option for most people because it's so small compared to what it is. And I don't like it when they lie to you about what it is. The Ego blew up our last RV and we had major issues with the electronics after using it, blew up the refrigerator, blew up the inverter circuit on the inside. Oh, it was a mess. So this is where I think it's safe to go. But beyond that, lithium ion phosphate batteries are gonna take so much more of a charge and discharge that, I mean, it's gonna last for a decade without issue. 
Plus, if you don't use it as much or on a daily basis, it's probably gonna last much longer than that. And I think this is a better place to put your money than into the other inverters where you're just gonna have to consistently buy lithium ion batteries after about you know, every five years or so. And they're not gonna take that full charge and discharge like these batteries will. That's my ploy on why I purchased this. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, great. I'm not here to sell you on this unit. I just think it's great to go over things that seem to really work for us. And I think for a lot of you guys who might have the other units, this is definitely you know, something else to look at in the future if you need to upgrade. But if you're looking at something, this is where it's at compared to those. It is 61 pounds, so it's fairly heavy. It does have two grab handles on it. If you wanted to buy wheels, Bluey makes an accessory kit that you can get wheels. They make a box, they make covers, they make all kinds of stuff. I'll leave some links in the description so you can check out what they have there. As always, we appreciate your time. Thanks for watching the video. Give us a like if you would. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Have a great day.